NXT TakeOver 36 is going to be live this Sunday. And the card will feature some major talents. We're going to see L.A. Knight defending his million-dollar title against Cameron Grimes. Also going to be seeing Raquel Gonzalez taking on Dakota Kai for the NXT Women's title. Adam Cole will be taking on Kyle O'Reilly in a two out of three falls match, which will likely be Adam Cole's swan song in NXT. Will it be his WWE swan song? We'll talk about that. Also, my boy, the greatest wrestler in the world, Walter, will be taking on Ilya Dragunov for the NXT UK title in what's sure to be an amazing bout and the main event. NXT said they, they're getting younger, they're getting bigger, and by getting younger, Samoa Joe is going to be wrestling for the NXT title in the main event against Karrion Cross. So a lot to talk about here, guys. Just overall thoughts on the card and, and the buildup to the event, and then we'll get into each match individually. But Kevin, you're the guest. We'll start with you. What do you think about this card and, and, and just the show as, it, as it's been built up? I love NXT personally. The of the three brands the most. So I'm looking forward to this man, to this uh, card. Um, I know I get the thing about Samoa Joe and, and uh, carrying cross being on the older side. I get it, but that should be a fantastic match. Walter dragging off. Are you kidding me? I can't even, it, it's only went Tuesday. I'm sorry, Wednesday. And I can't wait for this. This is insane. Rick, I love Raquel Gonzalez, but I love Dakota Kai more. So I want to see what this plays out. Looking forward to it. It's going to be great. Oh, I lost audio. Oh, no, we're still here. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, Trevor, what do you think about the way it's been built up? Oh, it's been built up oh, uh, amazingly, actually. And with I agree with Kevin. That's one thing we see eye to eye about. Um, I love NXT. NXT is my favorite brand. I've, I've watched NXT since it was its, its conception, honestly. Because I don't know about you, but like I'm a big indie guy. And it gives me indie feels, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so, but no, it, it looks it looks good. It looks like a good card. Um, I can't wait. Like, I mean, I'm a huge fan of Dakota Kai, but Raquel Gonzalez stole my heart. I, I, she's an amazing wrestler. Um, Karrion Cross and um, uh, 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 Samoa Joe, big man. It's, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be very interesting. Yeah, this is, look, look, there's a few matches on here, or sorry, there's one match on here in particular that I could go without, and that is honestly the NXT title match, but we'll get into that, because, uh, but everything else on this card intrigues me great, I love the the way they built up the story with Raquel Gonzalez and Dakota Kai, I love the LA Knight Cameron Grimes stuff uh, with the million dollar belt, Walter, anytime he's on TV, is a win for me. But let's get into the card, guys. Let's talk about it. The first match we're going to talk about is L.A. Knight defending his million-dollar title <laughs> against Cameron Grimes with the stipulation that if Knight wins, then the million-dollar man, Zed DiBiase, must be L.A. Knight's servant for a month. So... That's a bit of a stipulation there. Nice heel work by LA Knight. He's doing some of the best work of his career, I think. Trevor, what do you think? Let's start with you about this match, the way it's been built up, and who do you think wins and why? We've, we've talked about LA Knight. We've talked about like how both how both of us really enjoy LA Knight. Loved him in, in uh in X, um, not NXT, uh, Impact. He I love his work. I think he's amazing. This is probably his best work of his career. I totally agree. Um, and I can't, you, to me, you can't hate Cameron guy. Like you just can't. He's just, it's so, his character is kind of so ridiculous. You have to like him. You know what I mean? Like I love Cameron guys. And he reminds me of um, my family's from New Orleans. I've said this thousands of times. He reminds me of one of the, um, one of the, my uh, great grandmother's neighbors, actually. He sounds just like him. Um, interesting. interesting. I was <laughs> thinking he sounds. I was thinking he sounds a lot like Trevor Lee from TNA, but uh, mind your business. <laughs> 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 but um, but yeah. So anyway, who I think wins? I think Cameron Gomes wins, only because I think they're trying to get him over, and this is a great way to get him over. Cool, Kevin. Same question to you. What do you think about the build right. of this match, and uh, who do you think wins and why? Great build. Phenomenal. 
the best. No, I'm just kidding. Oh, um, dear. <laughs> cancel. No, no. <laughs> cancel before you got started. God damn it, Kevin. <laughs> anyway, um, no. Okay, so if you think that this is LA Knight's best work, you clearly haven't seen him in that commercial of Ric Flair for some kind of auto auto uh, <laughs> auto, shield. Oh, yeah, auto or was it auto shield, right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I marked out when okay. I saw LA Knight in that. Okay, yes, please <laughs> go ahead. Anyway, so <laughs> originally I would have had LA Knight go over again because I don't see any need to take the title off him. It, it, heels champions. This is a heel champion company. It is. It is. Oh yeah. I mean, yes. They say they, they say it's a face, but heels work a lot better. But when you add the stipulation with Million Dollar Man being a servant, there's no need to have Million Dollar Man on there for a month. I don't I don't see the need for it. I don't want it. So I'm gonna go get Cameron Grimes for that reason, just to not have Ted DiBiase on NXT television. If it was Raw or SmackDown, maybe I get that. But on NXT television, oh, if it was know. Raw or SmackDown, they just they they'd have it. They'd have the Million Dollar Man out there, IRS, just just all the legends we can. The nostalgia, baby, just nostalgia yeah. everywhere. Especially <laughs> if, if, if if they're cutting costs and they're going younger. I mean, would I rather see LA Knight win? Of course I would, but just mm-hmm. for those reasons, I, I think. Uh, Cameron Grimes takes this. Plus, maybe I'd imagine this is probably an opener, and gets the gets the crowd going. Yeah. Knight needs a, or not, not, Cameron Grimes needs a win here. He hasn't won in quite a bit, so. Yeah, sure. Ca- yeah. Cameron Grimes has not been winning as of late. Um, I w- I'm gonna go in the same direction as you guys. Cameron Grimes has to win this. This has been built up for him. It- it's a very obvious kind of like storyline point for. This to be the stipulation, LA Knight can can be like, yeah, I'm going to win, and then Million Dollar Man's going to be my servant. That's not going to happen. Cameron Grimes has to get this win, because if he doesn't, then Cameron Grimes, honestly, at this point, just looks like an, a fool, an idiot at this point, well, and, and a loser, and a loser. And that's that's yeah. the whole point of this, is to make him look like uh, you know, someone who is at least somewhat of a threat. But... I say Cameron Grimes is going to win. I love the work he's been doing too. I thought the yeah. the, the stuff where he's at the auction and he's uh, and then the million dollar man keeps outbidding him was was great. I thought those were some great segments. I think he's very charismatic. The million dollar belt will be good for him. And um, although I will say one thing though, I wish that they had dragged this out a little longer because I, I feel agree. like it, it, it's, been yeah. it's been rushed. It's been rushed. Like. L.A. Knight was someone, if you're going to put the million-dollar belt on him, do that for a few more months. Oh, yeah. I feel like oh. it was kind of rushed for, like, what? He's had it for, like, what, maybe, like, two, three months right now. And, like, he hasn't really – I feel like there's more to that they could have explored. Uh, regardless, that's the direction they're going in. But if you're going to put the title online and this, then I think Grimes has to win at this point. Because otherwise, again, he's just going to look like a loser. And then Agreed. he's not going to get over. Uh, but – but yeah, so I'm glad to see we're all in agreement there. Let's move on to the next match. Raquel Gonzalez. Rumors about her potentially moving up to the main roster have been swirling. She's the NXT Women's Champion right now. She will be defending against her former friend turned bitter enemy, Dakota Kai, in what I think is going to be a match that could steal the show. But Kevin, let's start with you. What do you think about the build of this match? Who do you think wins and why? All right. I don't want to go the entire show of picking heels. Omar can tell you that I love heels. I'm rooted for heels. But I'm a big heel fan, too. I am. I yeah. love heels. It's an amazing My, my favorite show. is actually tweeners, though. <laughs> I love tweeners. But Dakota Kai, because... All right, the build. I know it looks like maybe it's only been a build of nope. two or three weeks. But no, it's a, it's a couple of years at this point. You know, long storyline. Dakota Kai kind of brings in Raquel Gonzalez, and then Ra- Raquel leapfrogs her to become NXT Women's Champion. Jealousy, you know, former best friends. It's classic, classic storytelling. And, but then Raquel Gonzalez is much, much bigger. So how in the hell is Dakota Kai going to win this? I still think she will. She Kona bomb. Boom, one, two, some kind of... I, I expect outside interference. I'm sure Dakota Kai's got something, someone, you know along to help her out because I don't think Dakota Kai beating Raquel Gonzalez straight up one-on-one no interference makes any kind of sense because she's because of Raquel's size but I do see Dakota Kai winning the, this and new NXT women's champion Raquel Gonzalez or uh, excuse me, Dakota Kai <laughs> yeah Freudian slip right there cool Trevor yeah. what about you what do you think about this match 
I absolutely love Kevin because he's thinking the same. He says the same thing I'm thinking. Like, I honestly believe that this match was built up for months, years. Like you said, Raquel Gonzalez comes in. She outshines the Dakota Kai. She, she does uh, all these things that Dakota Kai couldn't do. She had Dakota Kai have a match against Io Shirai. Lost. Uh, Raquel Gonzalez has a great match with uh, Io Shirai. And beats are clean. Like, so, like, it. it's one of those things where you're like, yeah, this has been built, if you pay attention, it's been built up for a long time. But, honestly, again, I have to agree with Kevin. I think it would be, if, I mean, especially if Raquel Gonzalez is going to the main roster, Dakota Kai. Now, maybe this isn't her, maybe this might not be the match where she goes to the main roster, but she might have a few more matches after that. But I don't really see anyone else like being her competition. So yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll agree with Kevin. She uh, she loses this match. Dakota Kai wins. She goes to the main roster after this. Interesting. I gotta say, boys. I gotta say, this is this has been one of my favorite things on NXT. Like like outside of the, I love the Cameron Grimes Million Dollar Man stuff, but. The, the 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 way the long term there's there, there's a very little long term storytelling in WWE that's left. All right, unless you want to count the Miz and Damian Priest and that feud that's been going on for eight months that no one likes. But <laughs> but but this has been like like the seeds were planted very early on. I love the way it's been done, and I think that there there's like a real reason that Dakota Kai could actually win this and win it clean. Because here's the thing. I'm making this case not out of, oh, I, I, I think th- this is going to happen. I think this is a logical way to make it happen. You, you They built up Raquel Gonzalez as a monster, as an absolute monster run through the entire NXT women's division. She is dominant, unbeatable. And this is the perfect David versus Goliath moment. Will there be, like, you know, maybe a little bit of a, a distraction? Finish? Maybe, yeah, but... But I think Dakota Kai is the woman to do this job and, and, and finally defeat the the big monster in the NXT women's division that is Raquel Gonzalez. I think the storyline fits it. I think the talent is there. I think the ability to make it look like a real threat to her, make it look like a legitimate uh, win uh, is there. It all it, it checks all the right boxes for me. Also, these are two of the best performers in NXT, um, bar none. So for me, I think there's, I, I think this is going to be match of the night. This, this is going to be a match. Watch out, people! That's going to steal the show because you got a bunch of big matches out here. You got Walter in in action. You got the Cross Joe match. It's been a little overshadowed, I feel, but these two are going to go out there. They know each other very well. I think they're going to go out there and have a great match with each other, but I'm picking Dakota Kai in the end. Cool. Um, yeah. Let's let's move on and talk about the two out of three falls match between Adam Cole and Kyle O'Reilly, another pair of former best friends turned Bitter rivals. This rivalry has taken us through uh, uh, NXT Great American Bash. It's taken us through many matches before that. This is the culmination of the feud right here. It ends there. We saw Kyle O'Reilly. He picked the first stipulation, which was a singles match. Then we saw Adam Cole get to pick the second one in the street fight. And, of course, GM William Regal came out to announce that the third match if necessary will be a steel cage match so best two out of three falls we already know the the format of these like usually it's going to be like one person gets one match one second person gets a second match there's gonna they promise a steel cage there's going to be a steel cage we're likely going to get three falls but trevor what do you think about this match the the feud in general how it's been built up and and who do you think is going to be victorious and why is it kyle o'reilly (laughs) <laughs> so we're on the same page um we were, we, were, we were talking last week about some of the best robberies in wrestling and you mentioned and i agreed champa and Gogano. and that's probably one of the best uh, feuds in wwe right especially right now anyway um but this one is close it's such a good feud 
such a good feud. At first, I thought it was unnecessary. It, it was, and it was unnecessary because you had no reason to really break up that group unless you were trying to, you know, unless you knew Adam Cole's contract was up, and they probably did. You know, it's coming up soon, and then they also cut a bunch of people. But um, yeah, th- this one is going to be good. Um, I love Kyle O'Reilly. I love how they've let him shine against Finn Balor. S- those matches were classic, by the way. And uh, even the first um, Kyle O'Reilly Adam Cole match was very classic. But I think, like you said, Adam Cole wins this because you're trying to push Adam Cole. You're trying. I mean, not Adam Cole. I'm sorry. You're trying to push Kyle O'Reilly. You're trying to. You're trying to make him a bigger star than what he is. You're trying to give him a, a, a big push and put him over with the fans, even though he's already over with the fans. But I honestly think um, Kyle O'Reilly wins this one. Cool, Kevin. What about you? I miss you. I miss you. Come back. No. All right. Let's let's take the thing about Adam Cole's contract, all that stuff, out the window. Let's just talk wrestling logic. Okay. Right, 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 right. One, two out of three falls matches and steel cage matches are usually for the good guy to go over, the face to go over. Right. So Kyle O'Reilly is your winner there. Kyle O'Reilly, phenomenal talent. Character, maybe a little bland right now. The UE stuff was great. This cool Kyle O'Reilly guy he's playing. I'll have you know, you know air guitar Kyle O'Reilly is the most charismatic thing to ever come out of NXT. Absolutely. And this is why we're not friends, Omar. <laughs> yeah. No, I got to agree with Omar. Yeah, It is guitar. charismatic. I mean, unfortunately, yeah. it's, it's unfortunately one of the most charismatic things. I mean, well, it was it was Bobby Fish's entire gimmick. Like, like, like yeah. he didn't do anything else, yeah. <laughs> like other than that. Nope. But so, Kyle O'Reilly lost to Finn Balor what twice? Yeah, mm-hmm. he lost. He lost to uh, Karrion Cross, and even his win against uh, Adam Cole, baby, wasn't that like the unsanctioned match where like they both went yeah. to the hospital? Mm-hmm. So even that even that win is kind of. Tainted. You know, bit tainted. He needs a solid win against a former champion if he's going to stay in the upper echelon. Of NXT. Because I can't see him beating Karrion Cross or Samoa Joe no. as of now. But if he beats Adam Cole, then it elevates him in my eyes and the eyes of the fans. So he needs this in the worst way. Adam Cole, even if he stays in NXT, he could take an L here. It's not. It's not going to hurt him at all. A little bit of boom. Yeah, I mean, Kyler, look, Kyler Riley. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. Um, so for me, it, it it's very simple. Like you, you, I agree with you. You take the whole contract situation even out of out of the realm of uh, uh of this match, and you're left with the reality of they have a steel cage match. They have a two out of three falls match. This is the end of the feud. The end of the line. Almost never have they done it where the heel goes over, except when they did it in 2001 with Triple H and Stone Cold when yeah. Triple H won that two, two out of three falls match. So okay, but Triple so, H I, needed that. He he needed that win there over Stone Cold as opposed to the other way around. Yeah, you're right. You're yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, but but yeah. that was a special case of that. I was yeah. just thinking out loud, and that came to my mind. Yeah, you're right. It, totally. You're right. Totally. Totally fucked up my whole point. Doesn't matter. I'm going to keep rolling with it. <laughs> Kyle O'Reilly's going to win this match, guys. And it, it, it this is the only way you, you you have to do it. You have to do it because for you're right, Kevin. And, and Trevor, you hinted at this as well. For months, Kyle O'Reilly has been in, the, in this weird tier of a... He's not like the top, like the upper echelon of NXT. He's like one of the best performers. He has great matches. People want to like him. But... Like, is he, like, up there with Karrion Cross, Finn Balor, Samoa, like, you know, th- those guys? Eh, like, like n- not really, if we're being honest, but we want to like him. He's got the ability. It's just about making his character, making the his story arc get to that point, right? So the best way to do that or a way to help do that more is by getting this win clean as a whistle over Adam Cole and... Yeah, and and like there's multiple ways you could do it. I think there's going to be 
probably some shenanigans on Cole's part, obviously, but but you have to have O'Reilly win clean. Especially if this is especially if Adam Cole is gonna leave. If Adam Cole is going to leave, even if he's going to go to the main roster, we don't know what his contract situation is officially, but even if he goes just to the main roster, he's going to be out of the realm of NXT. So, and, But Kyle O'Reilly is going to be left behind, and he's the guy who people were for a long time saying, oh, maybe he's going to be the one to eventually beat Karrion Cross. We'll have to see if that's the case because uh, we got Samoe Joey in the main event there. But we, but I, I think that this is the first step you do to making him a legitimate badass, a legitimate main eventer in NXT. You, you have to have this. He has to have this win, and he has to look strong because if he doesn't, then he's just going to be, un- like, he's just going to be, you know, another, like, top-level, like, NXT guy who can work, but who people don't legitimately believe can be the guy. So, it's the only logical choice, is Kyle O'Reilly. Yeah. Anything else on this match, guys? Nope. All right, cool. Let's move on, then, and talk about a great match that's going to happen that I am excited. This is my main event. My main event, which is Walter. Such a fucking fanboy. I love Walter. <laughs> I'm proud of it. I'm proud of it, man. Uh, but Walter will be defending his NXT UK Championship, the most prestigious title in WWE. Say what you want. It is the most prestigious title, people in the chat. Uh, but, but it is the most prestigious title to me in WWE because of the man who is holding it. Walter, he's been champion for over 500 days. He is a monster. He is insane. He is brutal. And he will be taking on someone who I think is the perfect foil for him in Ilya Dragunov. It is going to be one hell of a match. There's a potential chance that Pete Dunne could get added. Um, We don't know that for sure, but there's elements of that that are being rumored and philosophized by many people. As of right now, it's just Walter and Dragunov. But Kevin, I'm going to go with you on this. I know you love Walter too. I do. What do you what do you think about this match? The matchup between these two, especially. What what can we expect from this match? Physicality, hard hitting, just you know, my God, I can't even wait for this. This is insane. Walter is phenomenal, but Dragonoff's got this all day because it's been we close to like what eight fifty now in terms of days, eight hundred fifty days for uh, yeah Walter. That's fantastic, but we need a new NXT UK champion. Dragonov is the man to do it, even though he's Russian. Whatever. Uh, <laughs> the, the, the UK, the UK. Whatever. We just <laughs> lost <laughs> all of our Russian viewers. <laughs> no, but it's, it's, oh, it's, not, it's not UK. It's not UK, but he's definitely the man to do it. This is good. I I can't even gather the words for this match because I'm, I'm just looking forward to it so much the first one was phenomenal i expect big things out of this one because it's on like any like main nxt television they're gonna go big or it, it's gonna be just a 10 stars out of five if you will sorry Meltzer. oh well, yeah well no if this to- if, if this dome. wasn't the tokyo dome i promise dome, you yeah. eight stars guaranteed <laughs> guaranteed in stock i mean I, I hope so and i hope it lives up to the hype because in my mind it's already oh my gosh you know but it'll so, be good. so you're picking Dragon off in the in, 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 in taking taking Walter's uh, title. You got Dragon off. I I do because yeah. Did Walter go? You know, almost a whole year not defending it because of COVID. So whatever. Fine. He just it's it's time for for a title change here. I think eight fifty or, or I, it's not eight fifty or whatever. It's eight hundred and something. It's. 800, I mean, like, no 864 days. Oh, okay. There you go. Even more than I thought. So, I mean, that's that's cemented the legacy right there. This is a perfect time for a change. Well, that's wrong. <laughs> Trevor, <laughs> what do you think, buddy? So, I love Walter. I do like Walter. Not Probably not as much as you two, but I love Walter. But Dragunov, I love Dragunov. I actually... I think it's an amazing rest. I think both both are very hard hitting. Both practice that strong style to a T. It is more is not so much strong style because it's not New Japan, it's UK. But um, yeah, they they're very stiff. Both of them are 
the very stiff shots. It's going to be fun to watch. It's going to be painful to watch. But I got Dragon on play. Yeah, can I just add that I don't think this would have be this would be on Takeover if it wasn't a title change coming up here. Like this would just be on NXT UK television. Well, I mean, uh, oh, Ch- Champa and sir. Walter were on uh, on Takeover, and Champa oh, lost that. No, I yeah, get that sir. too. That was that was a good match, but yeah. more people more people were going to watch NXT Takeover than NXT UK. Well, I, I barely watched NXT UK. True. True. So if you want, if you want the viewers, you pop the crowd with a title change here. Get a member to watch NXT UK Thursdays at three o'clock in the afternoon. Sir, I, sir, sir, everything that came out of your mouth was complete bullshit. I award you no points, and may God <laughs> have mercy on your soul for 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 doubting the strength of Walter, doubting the the ability of Walter to carry an entire brand on his back. Walter is NXT UK. There is no NXT UK without Walter. How dare you sully the good name of the greatest, the greatest champion in WWE. Yes, Roman Reigns. Yes, Bobby Lashley. Yes, to everyone. Walter is the guy. He's the He's the only one who does it for me. He's the only one who looks like a legitimate like like threat. I mean, Roman Reigns, yeah, he's gotten better, but Walter to me is like the guy. Like like this guy is money. You don't take the belt off of him now. You I I think I understand the 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 I think the desire for Dragonoff to be the guy. I think Dragonoff could end up being the guy to take it off of him, but I think you wait for another match. You like you 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 kind of wear this out a little more. I'll get to a thousand days of Walter being champion. Let him keep building up this this uh the the this streak this title reign this legendary title reign that we have not seen the likes of in decades i want to see walter be like i want to see him say like i'm going to be NXT UK champion for life and then maybe put him in the corner and and put Dragonov in the corner and have Dragonov beat him because i think Dragonov is is a great guy i think he's great I love the his look. I love his the way he wrestles. The, very similar to strong style of Walter. The contacts also boom, scary as shit. But, but I don't think you do it with Walter now. I think this is a good showcase match. If if, this, if you're gonna have this on Takeover, I think they're doing it to showcase both of these talents so that the next time they do this match, everyone tunes in and and this match is also a draw. I think that's the way you go. I'm probably in the minority and in, in some thinking here. I'm going with Walter. You never end this title reign. He, he's going to be 80 years old on his deathbed or whatever. My man's still going to be carrying around that that NXT UK strap if I have anything to say about it. Walter, you know how to fix all the WWE's problems, Trevor and Kevin? Needs more Walter. Just put Walter on everything. You will be fine. Anyway. Maybe travel to America. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, hey, hey! He's gonna be forced to for this event. We'll, we'll, we'll get yeah. him to. We'll get him to. Hey, money talks, buddy. Let's go to the main event now, guys. Karrion Cross, the NXT UK champ. Or sorry, no, 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 no. The NXT champion. What are you doing, sir? I don't know. I don't know what's going on today. Maybe not enough people are liking this video, subscribing to the channel, and hitting that notification bell so you get notified whenever That's a new video is released. What you doing there? Yeah, there we go. Just <laughs> throw it in there. Uh, but the NXT title will be on the line. This has been a few a uh, few weeks in the build. Samoa Joe returned as Mr. Regal's enforcer, and then he was provoked by Karrion Cross, the NXT champion, and which has caused these two to to be on a collision course for the NXT title. And there's a lot of people who are saying we could see a title change with Karrion Cross doing whatever the hell he's doing up there with Jeff Hardy on Raw. God help us all. Well, we are, and a lot of people are saying this could be his swan song in NXT, and he could be moving up to the main roster. We'll see about that, but what do you guys think about this match? Joe versus Cross for the title. Trevor, let's start with you. It's don't get me wrong, I like Joe. I do. And I like and I I'm actually Karen Cross is growing on me. I like him too. I like his work. But I don't know. I feel like this feud is unnecessary, kind of sorta. Um it's interesting, definitely. But I feel like it's Unnecessary. Like, I mean, yeah, Karrion Cross has been a force to be re- reckoned with uh, since he's been in NXT. I mean, hell, like his first title shot ever, he won off of Keith Lee, which we've talked about many, many times before, and I didn't fucking agree with it. But, I mean, it is what it is, and I 
do appreciate the work ethic of the man, and I think he's a good worker. Um, I I don't really know which way to go on this because, like, I feel like if you put Joe in the match, there is going to be a title change. But I also don't know with the whole we want to go younger. I mean, yeah, Gary Cross is older too, but Joe is older than him, so. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's one of those things. I don't, you know what? I'm going to go with Joe. I'm just going to go with Joe. Okay. Kevin, what about you, man? All right. Karrion Cross has main roster written all over him since day one. <laughs> main roster I, jobber I, written all over him. Right. No. <laughs> he's, he's a great no, jobber. That's what you <laughs> No. No. I, I 100% disagree. This this guy. Well, got Vince McMahon. Well, Vince McMahon 100% disagrees with you, my my friend. <laughs> no, he disagrees with me now because he came through up through NXT. But if he would have signed up to the main roster initially, you know, he could yeah. be an IC champ by now. Because that's how <laughs> yeah, I like to see my people go IC <laughs> champ then main world champ. I hate I hate when someone goes right for the world championship. But that's oh, don't hinder. No. We'll, we'll talk about yeah. someone who went right for the world yeah. championship, man. Unhinder gender, but continue. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> but um, you know, Joe, does he need this? No, three time NXT champion. But I think Joe. Is business and Joe will put over somebody younger, maybe like Kyle O'Reilly in a few months. So I think that's it's better that they put the, the, the title on Joe now. Let Kerry and go up to the main roster, fight Jeff Hardy a million times, rematch after rematch on Raw, and have Joe hold it for a few months, put over someone of these young guys are talking about, and then Joe could just I don't know, but I don't think Joe needs to be NXT champion very long. Yeah. Um if uh, for me, Joe is going to be a transitional champion. I think because Karrion Cross, they've already they've already made the whole thing like he's going up to the main roster. Like that's kind of already set in stone. It's going. It's just a matter of when they want to pull the trigger of him being exclusive to the main roster. So for me, it's one of those things where I just think Samoa Joe is going to come in there. He's going to win, and then he's going to have a very short reign. Like they could they could realistically do a very similar thing they did with Samoa Joe and Finn Balor. You remember where Balor kind of lost it out of, or lost it out of nowhere? Like I'm not saying do it at a house yeah. show or anything like that, but like you know what I'm saying? Like like it's going to be one of those things where you you didn't see it coming, but it happened. It's I see him as a transitional champion because he's someone who can definitely beat Karrion Cross and, and legitimately beat Karrion Cross, like like uh, in in the eyes of the fans in the storyline. But he's also someone who is vulnerable, who I think you know doesn't like you said doesn't need to be champion for that long. So it, the only question that remains for I think all of us is who is that guy? Is it Kyle O'Reilly? Is it uh, someone else on the uh, on the NXT roster? Is it someone who might come over from the uh, come down from the main roster potentially? Because we've seen a few guys do that. In like Finn Balor is like the biggest like name that's come down and had way more success on the on the NXT roster than he has on the main roster. So there, and there's a lot of guys who might fit that mold or, or, or who, that mold rather. So I agree with you guys. I think it's gonna be Samoa Joe. He has like it. Because Karrion is done. He's done with with NXT. There's nothing else for him to do, really. Yeah. I just said something about how I hate how someone goes right for the world title as opposed to like going to a secondary title. And I was going through the roster in my head, and I keep seeing your your pictures, your graphics float over. L.A. Knight, yep. NXT champion, after he loses the million dollars. Because there's no reason for him to be North American champion when there's not really anybody. Like, there's no solid North American champion contenders. No. Swerve is great, but there's no one like, you know, there's no one really going like Kushida. Eh, you know, um, God, what's his name? I can't think of his name. Uh, Roderick Strong, already been yeah. North American champ. He's definitely not heavyweight champion material, at least not in his current um, act. So yeah. I... I, I a Joe versus LA Knight sounds good to me, actually. Now that I now that I think about it, that does sound like a good one. Not, I mean, you could also put. I mean, I wouldn't, but you could also put Kyle O'Reilly in that North American Championship role. Yeah, that's fine. Because yeah. to to build him up even more to get yeah. to get into that yeah. world yeah. title level. Yeah, yeah. Because I mean, yeah. Swerve Scott is not a is, isn't bad. I actually like Swerve Scott. I've watched him since the Indies, but like, 
him and him as the North American Championship makes sense because he doesn't have world championship credibility out yet, I don't think. Yeah. But putting him against like Kyle O'Reilly would be a, a tremendous match, I think. Oh, I think we're overlooking someone too. We looked overlooking Johnny Gargano. Yeah. Oh, true. Oh my God, the Mister NXT Johnny Gargano. Yeah. Oh my. Yeah. I just again right. it just occurred to me because his face wasn't on those graphics. You forget about him, but yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, he will because he's not on the card. Right. So you so you forget, but there here he is. He he could easily be NXT champion again. Or geez, Ciampa. Ciampa, yeah. But oh, see, Ciampa's God. doing a tag team thing right now, right? I love. Yeah. I, 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 so someone told me that Tommaso Ciampa looks like a three-fourth scale model of Triple H, and I can't unsee it now. <laughs> like, like he will forever just be like baby Triple H now for, to me. <laughs> I mean, I, I know they want to go younger, but their their world champion, the, the credible world champion people are all on the older side, and that's right. what it is for right now. Yeah. Yeah, man. I mean, I can't wait. I can't wait to see what happens. I also can't wait for people to hit that like button. Thanks for watching this video from Real Take Sports Talk. Remember to like, share, subscribe, hit that notification bell so you get notified whenever a new video is released. Also remember to check out our live show every single Thursday at 8 p.m. right here on the YouTube channel. And remember, keep it real.